here's a here's this version of the game where you're basically an orc working at a coffee shop. Let's go, team. Oh my golly, I, I hate that Tumblr okay. culture has infected everything. We need another Vietnam. Down out their ranks a little. <laughs> Before we begin, let us thank you for clicking onto this video. If you'd like to see more videos like these, consider subscribing and hitting the bell button so you'll never miss an episode. Now, on with the show! Greetings everyone, welcome back to On Air with Jarvis, the podcast of all things Warhammer and general stuff I find of interest. Join me today, let's give a warm welcome to Lady Runesong. How's it going, ma'am? It's going well, thank you. Well, I think I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Though, I'm not too sure on that because I just turned 27 the week we're doing the show and I'm like, oh crap, I'm almost nearing 30. Oh, it's so close. Yeah, it's like, listen, I know your life's not over by the time you turn 30, but it's like, oh, crap, I didn't <laughs> think I'd be 30 so soon. Time flies, man. And hey, I'm not the, and 16-year-old Lewis is not that famous writer that he thought he would be by age 30. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that meme where it's Julius um, Caesar, you know, from Planet of the Apes, he's young, and he's like, I'm going to become a famous writer, this mechanics job's only temporary. And when he's like middle age, he's like, okay, my boss gave me the next few days off. I can catch up on sleeping. Oh my gosh, what a mood. A big mood. <laughs> but uh, yeah, a crisis aside, uh, for the audience who might not be so familiar with you, um, who may exactly be runes on like uh, sort of give an author's biography on who you may be just for the audience in the back who might not be so familiar with you. Um, I'm just, just a normal, like, fledgling hobbyist. Um, I, I've loved nerdy things for, gosh, as long as I can remember. Um, and yeah, I, I just sort of hang out online and just chat with people about nerdy things, like, from fantasy, uh, to, I'm starting to get into sci-fi. I've, I've always been more of a fantasy person, but... Warhammer is sort of uh, my way of delving more into the sci-fi. And yeah, I just hang out and just nerd out over stuff. <laughs> yeah, that is the case for me too. I've always enjoyed like fan fantasy stuff more than sci-fi. So I think it's obvious that I liked Lord of the Rings more than Star Wars for <laughs> certain reasons. Oh, same. <laughs> but uh Actually, I think my first interaction with you will be actually being seeing bits of your art from the Legion Discord server. And I gotta say, from the bits of art I have seen from you, it looks really nice. I gotta say that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, do you do art often? Uh, I try to. Um, I hit quite an art block lately. Um, but slowly getting there. I was trying to doodle yesterday, so maybe I'll post that later and that'll uh, kind of help me get out of my little art funk. Yeah, it is um, pleasing art to see. I, I like seeing the bits of your art that you've made. And yeah, I, I, that's a comment I had to give out. <laughs> oh, thank you. But um, I am actually curious too on something like Warhammer while we're on that subject. Um, what was like the introduction for you for something like Warhammer? And what may stand out to you when compared to other things like Star Wars or Star Trek? I am interested in that. Um, Let's see. Warhammer was definitely one of those things that, like, through the memes, you sort of absorb through osmosis just hanging out online. Um, you see, like, the memes, the fan content, and, like, I slowly became aware over the years that this thing existed. And uh, I had no idea what it was for a long time. Um, I thought it was just video games at one point. And then I would see, like, the old art, and I'm like, oh, that looks like... 80s metal band stuff what's up with that mm -hmm. and then i figured out like oh it's this is a board game this is cool and i had friends years ago that were into it i think they were a little more into the aos side of things 
And uh, I hadn't talked to them about it directly yet. I was just sort of investigating. Um, we ended up for other reasons, like breaking up. Um, but I took Warhammer with me and figured, oh, I, I really need to sit down at some point and research this IP because this looks really cool. A uh, lot more hardcore than Star Wars or anything else I'd looked into. And uh, I think it was, yeah, it was maybe the first year of lockdowns. Um, bored out it of my mind. It was four like years else. already? Right? Yeah, and, it's like, holy crap. Oh, seriously. And it, it all feels like it was still only two years ago, maybe. But no. yeah. <laughs> so uh, one day I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to finally make the jump because I have no idea how big this IP is. I got to start somewhere. Um, but I really liked the, uh, the Primarchs and just all the Space Marine stuff. And I picked one at random. And I thought, okay, I'll go, I'll go for like rule of cool. Um, those Night Lord guys look really neat. So yeah. I looked up lore for them and I found, I think it was Arch's like two hour long Conrad Kerr's video. And I listened to that and I'm like, holy crap, this is, this is dark and horrendous. Where can I find more of it? <laughs> and. <laughs> You mean 40k is not like if the emperor attacks a speech device? Oh my gosh, no. I think I discovered that afterwards. Um, and I can't remember at what point I found the Astartes animations. Those were amazing. Mm. And I remember thinking, mm. oh my gosh, like how awesome must this IP be to inspire people to make this sort of thing? And yeah, it kind of snowballed from there. I kept looking into more Space Marine stuff and then uh, eventually into more Xenos stuff. So that's how I got started. That's an interesting story. And yeah, I think when it comes to something like 4K art, especially like from the old black and white style art, um, I think the best way to describe 4K, and this is something I think people tend to forget sometimes, is that um, you can give 4K all this like allegory. You can give 4K all this like references to something, but at the end of the day, it's also um, 80s heavy metal or <laughs> along the lines of that. That's the best way to describe something like 4K, like seeing the art depictions and seeing how the saying is. It is basically like 80s heavy metal. That, in my point of view, yeah. at least. And one of the creators, I might have been Priestley, uh, said that it was basically just. 80s style uh escapism and boy does that still you know ring true to today it's like oh no you don't understand this extremely important satire that <laughs> must be treated <laughs> seriously at all times do not like any of the characters <laughs> right it's like i don't know guys it's like i really like character ryan or you can't just tell me i can't like him exactly Besides, it, it's like the um, the Rick and Morty meme, uh, where Rick's like, you know, oh, what does he say? Like, what? Like, why are you booing? I know it makes you cheer. Oh, I don't know and, actually that one. But well, then again, I just don't watch Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. But, uh, but yeah, it's like I I don't understand why people can criticize like, oh, you like those evil space marine guys? Like, what does that say about you? Well, and I'm sitting over here like you're idolizing joker over there hush oh my goodness <laughs> people let me tell you a thing about the whole joker batman discussion i am going on that tangent on that you <laughs> please do open something in that box let me tell you something stop <laughs> victimizing the joker why do people do this it's like right? on the whole talk of oh batman beats up poor people it's like what's the fucking joker then right <laughs> It's like it's not, a cartoon. It's not like the animated series didn't have an episode dedicated to why uh, they would have been bad anyway, with or without Bruce. Yes, and it's like, and that was thirty years ago, or exactly. somewhat. And you know, there's I, this whole episode. I'm sorry, there's this whole episode where um, it's just about Joker, you know, victimizing himself just so Harley Quinn could escape him out of jail or Arkham. <laughs> 
as oh, I right. cuss, that's the point. That's what he does. Yeah. And it's like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, guys, like, why are you victimizing a guy who beats up his girlfriend? Right. <laughs> and awful. Yeah, because that's the point with the Joker. But it's like, oh no, you don't understand. Just one more hospital, just one more school, and it'll fix oh everything. Gosh. Yeah, well, and people need to realize that there's a difference between enjoying a character and idolizing one. Um, like, even if people were right that the Imperium are uh, totally irredeemably evil, we're just enjoying the setting. We're just enjoying the characters. We don't condone what this or that faction does. Like, I may be a huge Necron fan, but it would be pretty bad for humanity if they won. So it's all just for fun. Or it's like, um, there's a difference between the setting and the character, because the Imperium of Man is not a character, it's a setting, that, or that's the best way to describe it as. But um, then right. there's Imperial characters like Caiaphas Kane or um, Captain Titus. Exactly. It's like, these are just characters within a world that they have to work with. Mm-hmm. But, uh, or even for me, I like the Tau Empire, that's my fa most favorite faction, right? Yeah. And, but doesn't mean that, or what, oh, but what is that child about you? And it's like, well, I don't know. Farsight just seems like a cool samurai kind of character. That's why yeah, I like, like memes them. aside, it's a cool faction. I yeah. love the, uh, the tech that they have. Yeah, exactly. And also, I do like the sort of idea that these are the Tao Empire. They are the most rational people within 40k in a world that, or in the same, in where there is no rationality. <laughs> right it's like as soon as they oh they're like oh this small little planet that we integrate into our empire that's the imperium of man it's not this huge galactic thing that turns out it is a huge galactic thing then they discover the tyranids then they discover chaos so oh my gosh yeah the death of innocence <laughs> right poor sweet summer child yeah and i think it's because of that that you know there is that death of innocence then i'm not sure if you're paying attention to like um tau lore at the moment but there does seem to be like a civil war cooking up between like certain factions within the empire and that's something i'm interested in seeing oh, i heard about that that'll mm -hmm. be interesting to see mm -hmm. but um from bits of I, i've actually gone come to know about you right and and if memory serves me right, um, one of your favorite factions in 4AK, um, other than Necrons, like you've just said, um, for something like Space Marines, you said you've liked the Karkarodrons, if I'm right? Yep. Yeah, and that's kind of interesting, and these are a, a pretty cool idea for a Space Marine chapter, and they have the unofficial pseudonym of, you know, Space Sharks, and yeah, I kind of like the idea. <laughs> oh, they're so cool. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I'm not sure if this is officially true maybe you can help me on this but the idea is that these guys are raven guard successors yes uh officially they're raven guard successors um i do enjoy the idea that they might be night lord successors um mm -hmm. but i think it's more accurate to say that they're raven guard but hey i won't deny people their head cannons but yeah they um there isn't a whole lot on them, but yeah, it's said that they, uh, they're they like an exiled uh, chapter, um, or at least they refer to a, a day of exile. So, not sure what that's about, but uh, they, they're content to just sort of patrol the periphery of the Imperium, and uh, they're, they're very, very loyal. They're loosely Codex compliant. They're very much the, of the Barbosa mindset of they're more like guidelines than actual rules. That's um, how most people see something like right. the Codex, yeah. So, yeah, they uh, kind of like an actual shark. They're uh, out there in uh, in the deep patrolling. In the ocean of space. Exactly. Yeah, I can understand the idea that these guys might be Raven Guard successors because of the pale skin that they're described of having, but I don't know. And something about that always makes me think of like world eaters because come on, they're unofficially called space sharks. And I know right. <laughs> and I know Jaws is not the most perfect portrayal of sharks, but it's like that's what most people think now when they think of sharks. They just think of this like 
you know, a fish with a mouthful of teeth and a bad attitude. Right. <laughs> Though, um, it could still fit with something like Raven Guard because, um, I, you could say it's kind, it's kind of like following the idea that the the shark is stalking the person said on say on a boat and stuff. You know, like a stalking yeah. predator, though I'm not sure if that's something a shark actually does, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm not too sure. It's, uh, I think I, I can see where people would get the impression that they might have traitor gene seed, um, because of their fighting style. Um, they very much favor, you know, close combat. Yeah, they, they are not long distance fighters. They are, very much into scouting and assault. Um, so I can see where people get the impression that they, they could secretly be uh, trader stock. It wouldn't be um, so absurd, with, I guess, with the idea that they could be like Night Lords or World Eaters. But then again, it is just like fanfic or, you know, yeah. head cannon at the end. And that's the awesome thing about it. Like, there's so many chapters that have sort of this blank spot about their origin Mm -hmm. Um, and you can imagine whatever you want, um, or, you know, they may have a, <clears throat> they may have a canon, uh, Primark, but who knows, that could just be what they put on the records so nobody would get suspicious. Yeah, it's kind of like the idea of, like, ra um, Blood Ravens. Um, I'm not sure if the, you know, it's been officially declared that they're not Thousand Sun successors, but... At the same time, from a little blurb that came from a horror's heresy book, it, it's almost like almost criminal for people to have the head cannon or not to have the head head cannon that uh, these guys aren't Thousand Sons because it's kind of too perfect for them not to be. <laughs> right. But then again, them also being like uh, word bearer successors would still be appropriate from what people have said. Mm hmm. And Cut. heck, like there, there are so many chapters including this one where you've got fellow space Marines calling them traitor born. Now that could just be, you know, anger flaring up and just trying to find the most hurtful thing that they can say. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, how, how insulting to a loyalist to be called traitor born, but who knows, like, do they know something we don't about these various chapters? And, and, and in fact, there's this one chapter that I remember reading from a white dwarf magazine called sons of the Phoenix. And it's like, guys, these guys wear white and purple or violet or whatnot. You say they're Imperial Fist successors, but it's like, are you really telling me for a chapter that's call themselves Sons of the Phoenix, they're not um, Emperor's Children successors? Right. <laughs> it's like, come on, it, they're wearing purple. I don't yeah, let, Let's check under those helmets and see that hair color. Yeah, it's like, it, it is literally that comic where Gilman is talking to his son, of, Sons of the Phoenix, and he's like, I am proud to serve the Sons of Dorn! And the guy <laughs> takes off his helmet and sees all the platinum hair, and it's like, my lord, is there a problem? No, not at all. <laughs> exactly. But then again, um, headcan is fun, and... It is something I think it gives like 4K the liberation of where it's like you can create things with something so wide of a sandbox like 4K. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, there's something I want to go on a tangent on, right? So um, there's certain armors that are very fitting for certain themes of Space Marines, right? So mm -hmm. like um, Gravis armor, it might not work so well for something like White Scars, but they work perfectly with something like... Um, Imperial fists, let's say, and for something like Phobos armor, you wouldn't say you wouldn't think those fit well with a chapter like Iron Hands, but they work perfectly with, say, Raven Guard. And with that whole idea of them being like you know sneaky boys, I don't know. I like to have this sort of hand head cannon that maybe some a chapter like the Carcharodrons might wear more Phobos armor with the whole idea of them sneaking up onto the enemy and doing a close combat. But that's just what I think. I do see a lot of homebrew. Um and kit bashed Karkardon armies that use that armor. It oh, seems the favorite yeah. yeah, it seems the favorites are that and uh Terminators. Um Oh yeah. Terminate Yeah, Terminators I think are mentioned more in the lore. Um but yeah, like I I'm totally on board with with them having um more stealthy suits of armor. Makes sense for the chapter that doesn't even have a battle cry, like 
their battle cry is just dot dot dot. <laughs> um or baby so, shark da, 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 baby no. shark da, 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 da. That'll be in my head for days. What? What? <laughs> uh but yeah, they um I think if I got around to making my own army, I'd probably just go with basic aquila armor because it looks like it's easier to obtain and I've never kit bash anything, so that would be sort of my starter set. And then I'd probably experiment with other uh other forms of armor as I sort of like get used to kit bashing and such. Yeah, that's the thing too. I, I don't think I've ever kit bashed myself, and I'm afraid that if I were to start, not only will I mess up, but I'd be like, oh great, I wasted nearly a hundred dollars on this model. Right. And There's I've a- seen some cool stuff too. Like people will uh 3D print like shark bones. Mm-hmm. Um that's metal. That's metal. Right. Uh I yeah, I see all kinds of cool things. It's such a good chapter for uh kind of brainstorming all kinds of things that you can add onto it. Some people just take terminators and they'll just put on um what is it now? Like uh Maori iconography, um, which is an interesting headcanon to me. And I, sorry, I kinda, don't, I'm sorry, I don't know exactly what that is. Um, what is that? Oh, um, Maori, um, sort of like, um, somebody's going to kill me for this. It's, it's sort of like the, uh, Hawaiian aesthetic, but oh, okay. New Zealand. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That does seem fitting. Yeah. yeah. That actually works so well with something like Carcarajons. I've never thought of that. Damn. That works well. Doesn't it? Some people will yeah. just keep it simple and they'll get uh, Space Marine minis as is and they'll hand paint uh, Maori iconography on them. Oh, uh, others well, will go. I never considered that. I never considered that. That's such a cool idea. It is. I, it, it made me want to start looking into uh, that aesthetic and kind of studying up and figuring out what would look good. Um, and it brings me back to the Maori theming of like Bionicle. Um, so it's, it's such a good combo, oh. but yeah, some people will go all out and they'll, they'll 3d print like bones, um, shark teeth. Uh, I think, yeah, sometimes people will, uh, try to order, uh, I think bones from AOS and not fantasy, but whatever the, whatever the other current, uh, for hammer IP is <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they'll they'll just cover their Kakarodons and stuff. So I'm too newbie for that, but I, I appreciate that there are people who go all out on that. Oh, and because uh Kakarodons are usually uh a couple steps behind as far as innovation, they it seems very appropriate that people will use pieces from Horus Heresy. Oh so Yeah, that's right. It would, yeah. Because they're always out on the fringes. They're usually one of the last chapters to upgrade. Um, so it's really neat when people use um, heresy elements uh, to kit bash. Yeah, I especially like that. When people use like bits of armor from like other Space Marine kits and make some kind of like new weird hybrid like turns in terms of like armor combination. So um, it's kind of like in Space Marine how when you customize your Space Marine character, you can put on all these different kinds of armor on him. Like, right. He- he might wear like um, Maximus armor, but you can give him like a helmet that's Mark Three, and so forth. And that's just so much customization, and I love seeing stuff like that. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. Like um, this is something I've been wanting to do for such a long time. If I were to do like an original Death Watch kill team, one of the things I want to do is that each of these Space Marines has a different helmet from a different Mark. So it's like one guy yeah. might wear. Yeah, like one guy might wear the beaky helm, one guy might wear the bucket helmet, the other guy the Maximus helmet. It's just stuff like that that I like seeing, and it really does build character, doesn't it? Yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. And and I, and, when, and with you bringing up like a car drawings and like Hawaiian iconography, right? Um, that, that sort of reminds me of something like Rainbow Warriors, how they're unofficially called the Aztec Space Marines and people like portray them as being <laughs> Aztec. It it works so well. And that's something you just don't consider. Yeah, It does. There, there's so many cultures that people can draw from for these chapters. 
or how about this? Um, a <laughs> Raven Guard fighting a Wendigo. Oh my gosh. Would that not be fitting? Would that not work so well? That would be so cool. <laughs> you can probably even do that on tabletop too. You can get like that Wilder Fiend thing from AOS and have a Raven Guard staying over it. Oh, right. Why not? Yeah. Hey, it's a trademark version of the Wendigo. That's the difference. <laughs> yep. And it is the Wendigo. If you read the description, it describes it as having antlers. It, they're not horns or antlers. It's like, guys, come on. That's the Wendigo. Exactly. And it's awesome. It's so cool. I have such a good monster design. Mm-hmm. You know, with us even talking about like Kakar Drons and Terminator armor, right? Because that works so well with a chapter like that. I think the most famous um, character from the Kakar Drons, um, Tiberius. Yeah. Um, you know, the biggest boy that could be a space marine. The Red Wake himself. Yeah. That, that Just thinking about the chapter being sneaky is like, it's, sorry, it's hard for me to think of this guy sneaking around wearing Terminator armor <laughs> and considering that his two weapons are, you know, power fists that are also part chain, chain fist and part power claw. You're telling me that guy is just sneaking around in the battlefield and not going like Doom Slayer <laughs> against a bunch of tanks. <laughs> Right. Yeah, he um, he's so badass and they have to keep adjusting his armor. So it, it is hard to imagine, like, how does this giant face shark Hulk thing? Uh, how does how does he sneak around? How is he shark like? And but then yeah, again, he, <laughs> but he then makes again. work. But then again, it's like, how could a shark sneak up on us? But it's like, well, it's a shark still. Right. <laughs> Instead of a giant fin announcing him, it's just his sheer size. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, he's so big, has his own gravitational pull. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't need to run to you. You'll just float over to me. You don't understand. I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Actually, this is something I've remembered from documentary when it comes to something like sharks, and maybe this you could say this um, would fit for something like Tiberius, because I don't know a thing about him besides the general info. But from what I've been told, um, I think the bull shark is a, the more aggressive shark when compared to, say, the great white. So <laughs> I guess you could I think say... they are, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, if it, it, it's the name, you know, bull shark, because the bull has a bad attitude, so... I think maybe something, maybe Tiberius could be called the bull shark of the chapter, but I don't know. Could be, yeah. And, and if, um, what if, is this? Uh, a shark if fan artist? <laughs> if the fan artists want something goofy, uh, for inspiration, uh, what if they're like real sharks and you like, if you like boop their noses, it like gives them a uh, sensory overload and they just calm down. <laughs> Yeah, I've been told that's something you just do when, when it comes to swimming with sharks, but I, I wouldn't know. Yeah, but, it, it's funny. Uh, people will put on uh, these uh, special gloves and they'll just like pet shark noses. And the sharks, it's so funny, they just stop. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess they enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, I almost love when they're being pet by humans. <laughs> right. <laughs> Feels like it shouldn't work, but it does. Yeah, and uh, I remember seeing this one art, you know, talking about Tiberius, where it's like his um, hel um armor, um, like rammed around him is like a shark's jaw. And I'm like, okay, that's Mel. I'm surprised there hasn't been a Mel of this guy yet. Or oh wait, I think there is Forge World, Forge World, maybe I think there might be. I haven't looked in a long time. Mm -hmm. I know, I know that's one of the things that people will kit bash is they'll print out like a whole ass uh shark jaw and they'll put it on. Uh, the collars. Oh, on the subject of car car drawn memes, I I can't. I almost forgot about this one. Um, does one of these guys carry like the IKEA plushy shark, the Blaha? Oh, <laughs> they should. <laughs> yeah, I got R of that done. It's amazing. Oh, gosh, I, I've seen those sharks in person. They're adorable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they are. <laughs> Just one more subject on actually on Tiberius before we move on, because I think this idea is too perfect. So um, if they were to get or if some, someone like Tiberius were to get a model, 
I have this idea that because of his size, wouldn't it not be appropriate if he was almost the size of Gilliman or the lion? Oh, gosh. You, and you could meme the hell out of it, but he just never stops growing. Just keeps getting taller and everyone's like, are we sure he's not a Primarch? I, don't know, I just think it, 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 gives, it gives him my character where one that is one of the bi- biggest thing about his character is that he is like a very big space marine. And maybe it shouldn't be because he's maybe part Primarch. And I hope that's not the case because would that not maybe take away a bit of his character? Yeah, like I think he's just a normal dude who just works out too much. <laughs> you know, people because there are su- such things that people just being, you know, they're big people just because of genetics. Also, it'd be kind of ironic, too, um, that the chapter master of one of the five of the Pentarchy of Blood would end up being part Primarch or all Primarch or something when he's one of the ones that uh, or his chapter are one of the ones that uh, participated in this um, War of the False Primarch. And it would be pretty ironic. Like, oh, we're going to wash these uh these traitor chapters in this more of the false primark but we're gonna ignore that tybros is over here uh getting taller and taller and looking more like a primark oh yeah I- i've heard a bit of that lore uh, I, just, I just don't know much about that actually <laughs> there isn't a whole lot um but it is funny that there's like this whole blood theme uh around the pentarchy um, I wish they'd they'd write more about it because uh, it sounds like it's an interesting time in in uh, space marine history because the um uh yeah the high lords of Terra were basically like uh you five you're gonna go and take care of this bit of heresy over here and I think it was eleven traitor chapters that they took out mm. um but they had uh. Two Raven Guard, two Blood Angel uh, chapters, and I think the fifth was Iron Hands. Um, and they're all either blood or the color red themed, which I think is funny. Okay. Um, but yeah, there, there's not a whole lot on it. I, w- I wish they'd write about it more. Okay, but probably what would happen is that if they make a book series of it, they'll probably mess it up. Yeah, maybe it's better being one of those things that you just had canon. Yeah, it's like, it's okay for there to be a bit of info on this lore that's, you know, it's interesting, I guess, like the saying, some history, but at the same time, you know, by exploring it, you take away a bit of that mystery. Right, and you you don't want to overdo that sort of thing. Um, Oh, especially by doing, like, what, 50 plus books on the horse heresy, it's like... Oh my gosh. Like, guys, I... Nothing imagination. Listen, I do like the books, but it's like there's such a thing as overkill. Yeah. And you want to be careful because obviously you want to answer questions. Uh, any big mystery boxes that have been hanging there for too long, uh, you might want to resolve at some point. Um, but it's also okay for things to just stay a mystery because um, mm. otherwise uh, you kind of shrink your world down. And oh, yeah. Ironically enough, that's what happens by exploring it. You're on radically make it smaller. Yeah, I've heard of that before. Yeah, you, you explore too much and then there isn't a whole lot for your fandom to work with and to imagine. And it would suck to do that with an IP that is so headcanon friendly, I guess. Mm-hmm. If they encourage like homebrew and such, you don't want to answer every mystery because then you're you're kind of not that people can't, you know, ignore whatever they want to ignore. Um, but you kind of cut off options for people when they're home brewing. Yeah, because and this is exactly why people like something like AOS because um it's a very enormous setting because it's not explored so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like the multiple rounds feel really enormous when compared to the 4K galaxy because um it's described as being bigger than galaxies. But at the same time, they haven't explored it a much, so much where it takes away that mystery and interest. And that is one of the reasons why people like AOS so much and someone like me who likes AOS so much. Yeah, because yeah, yeah because there's th- that sandbox of homebrewing that you can create with something like it. 
Right, because um, I don't know a whole lot about AOS, but uh, I, I love there's AOS. a lot of I love AOS. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of um, planet hopping, isn't there? Um, that's the idea of it. It's called like um, realm traveling. So there's these like little gates across multiple realms, which are basically like bubbles of reality orbiting that sort of um, pseudo universe. So it's like yeah. enter enter this portal, you will end up in this realm. Enter this portal, you enter this realm. But it's not just something you create. It's act- It's literally these like doors of reality almost that are like heavily guarded at all costs because if they're destroyed, they're gone forever. It's like you can't create like a you know realm gate just to cross a realm. It doesn't. That doesn't exist. Oh, okay. So hypothetically, if you destroy all the gates across this one realm, then everyone's trapped there. Oof. <laughs> Yeah, isn't that a scary thought? And that's something that happened in like wars and stuff in that setting. That's cool. Mm-hmm. And yeah, leaving some of those places a mystery can uh, can give people a nice blank slate to fill in with whatever they want to dream up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, I think that's something people need to understand too about 40k. Yeah, is that um, lore is great and rain bugs is great. Yeah, at the same time, it's okay. The sandbox is there for a reason. Mm-hmm. But um, on to some 4AK news, actually. And this is something I've been eyeing on for like a, almost a whole year. And I'm not waiting till September to talk about this, right? So um, <laughs> sp- um, Space Marine 2, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I- I'm excited. Um, mm-hmm. I'm I'm kind of waiting like uh, for more news. Um gameplay reviews and such i'm kind of stepping back not getting too involved in case something goes wrong you know don't want to get my my hopes up but yeah i i love what i see so far um and really looking forward to playing it yeah i know what you mean because i got overhyped for video games before like um um aliens colonial marines Mm -hmm. yeah that was a huge disappointment but Oh. this is definitely one you uh, people will get because i talk about this a lot um metroid other m oh okay yeah never have i felt so bored playing a video game before <laughs> oh and, and that's the worst you're not supposed to be bored during a video game oh especially when it's like 20 minutes of cutscenes, and it's like it's still going <laughs> what is this an interactive movie oh god damn oh god damn don't get me started on that <laughs> not like I I'm not getting burned again. I was uh, an anthem player, and I'm I'm not going through that again. <laughs> oh, that sounds familiar. Anthem. Um, what happened? Oh, that was the big. Um, oh, this is going to be the everything killer. Uh, and you're piloting uh javelins, which are suits of armor. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're basically Tony Stark on an alien planet. Okay, and. Yeah, that was um, Bioware, I think. Yeah. And I I loved the way it looked. I loved the way it was advertised. Um, playing it, um, it's third person. <clears throat> but I loved the flying. I loved the gunplay. Really fun on a technical level. Boy, was that a disappointment. It was so small. The story was virtually non-existent. Oh, um, the loot pitiful, the gameplay loop pitiful. You get to the end of the game and you're stuck with, uh, I think it's like three repeating bounty quests and that's it. Oh, um, no. Yeah. And they basically abandon the game. So you can still play, but there's nothing to do. Oh, God, no. Yeah. So ever since then, I've every time I get into a game uh, that's up and coming, I'm I take a step back and I'm like, okay, I'm not getting burned again. Let's see how this plays out before I get invested. And I think the most criminal was Last of Us Two. Oh my gosh! Yeah, (laughs) all looks and nothing else. The first game was fun. I played it like once. Um, I had a fun time playing that game. But it's like, do people forget that a video game's also a video game, guys? It's it's not an interactive right. movie. Come on, that's that's I mean, almost yes, like I sure am enjoying my zombie walking sim. 
Oh, that that's how it is these days, isn't it? <laughs> it? People just want life simulators. Or it's like, hey, guys, Dungeons and Dragons, the life simulator. It's like, what happens to oh. going to dungeons and <laughs> killing dragons? Right. But it's like, no, guys. Instead, here's a here's this version of the game where you're basically an orc working at a coffee shop. Let's go, team. Oh my golly, I, I hate that Tumblr okay. culture has infected everything. We need another Vietnam. They're down at their ranks a little. <laughs> Quoting Bart Simpson. Oh my gosh, yeah. Like, and because I was there um, during the super who lock days of Tumblr. So I'm used to seeing just seas of fanfic where everybody's dating somebody at a cafe. And I'm seeing that more and more in nerd spaces. And I'm like, oh no, Tumblr's escaped containment. It, it's all just girly fanfic crap. No. All, all this My Little Pony stuff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I think Bronies has mostly like disappeared, haven't they? Surprisingly, it, the whole thing has, has either died or gone underground. It's almost like COVID. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's such a weird phenomenon, and I I hate that it's becoming the dominant thing uh, in video games. Is to sort of I, I'm not hip with like kid slang and stuff, but um, I I've heard that I've heard it described as like people or settings or something being woobified, which is like you kind of kiddify things, and it's such a shame, like. You look at Warhammer, and it's like, how do you kiddify Warhammer, and why should you? Now, hold on. They made a kid's version of, you know, Warhammer book. Um, but here's the thing. I think that's just went away, because I just don't think people were interested in that, or it didn't grow anywhere as people thought it would be, or thought it would. But yeah, it's like, I, you have to you, wonder if you are maybe right, parents though. saw those and were like, Oh, well, that's interesting, Jimmy. What is Warhammer? And then they Google it, and they're, they they see like the heavy metal cover type art and all the blood and uh, and war and everything, and they're like, "Never mind, Jimmy. You don't need those books." But it's like you are right on that. It's like you how can you really like kidify something like Warhammer? I don't think you can, guys. There's literal chain swords, right? Or you know, Slay Nash. And, and even if you don't uh, kidify things. Um, kind of like you were saying with the, you know, orc barista phenomenon. Um, it's so weird to see people in the community call for more, uh, romance focus. Oh, uh, God. and, and that's fine if that's like a side thing, but there are people who for some reason want that to be the dominant subject in Warhammer books. And I'm like, are you sure you like Warhammer? <laughs> It's like I may, we're just be, I'm maybe just being sincere, buddy. It's like maybe this is not the most appropriate thing for you, right? Or maybe this is not <laughs> the best place for you. It's like I don't, imagine going to like a steakhouse and complaining they don't have vegan options, and it's like, well, buddy, maybe this is not the best restaurant for you. Why right. are you gatekeeping me? <laughs> yeah, like if I wanted a, a romance fix, there are plenty of other properties I can go to for that. Yeah, you can read Fault in Our Stars. <laughs> Oh, gosh. I don't know. I never read that, but ba back on Space Marine 2. <laughs> right? So, um, I just want to say this in terms of, like, story, um, story-wise, because it's something I think they just can't ignore. And I'll admit, there's just not much of the story they have revealed so far, and, you know, good for them. Keep the game, you know, much as much of um secret as you can, just so people can you know find that interest when playing that game, right? Um, mm -hmm. Have you played the first game? I have not. I wish I did though. All right, but um, do you know what the whole thing with like Leandros? A little bit. Uh, I'm slowly learning as we get closer to the release of this next game. Right. So um, the whole one of the biggest things in that game is that um. Titus has like a three man squad of space marines, and that includes a veteran, and that includes a um, space marine that has just moved on from being a novice, and his name is Leandros. 
And right. it, the idea is that Leandros is like very green and he's very Codex compliant and he really takes the Codex Astari so narrowly. And he's the Boy Scout. He is literally the Boy Scout. And because of that, <laughs> he comes across as annoying and he always second get questions like um, Titus's actions. It's like, this goes against the book. And it's like, buddy, it's not the cosmos writing the instructions <laughs> on Earth. It's, that's not what the Codex Astari is. The memes are making more sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, by the end of the game, because it's sort of revealed that Titus might be a psychic blank because chaos was just not affecting him. Um, Interesting. Or at least that's the theory that Titus might be a, psych- a psychic blank. Um, because of that, Leandros reported him to the Inquisition and he was arrested. Oh. oh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And... At the end, and and Titus's last words to him are like, the Codex of Stars is a set of rules. They are meant to guide us and forge us as space marines. But how we live with those rules is a true test, and you have failed. Now, um, Oof. yeah, so that kind of like um talks down at, um, what's that infamous Ultramarines writer? Oh, uh, yeah. I know who you mean. I can't remember oh, the name. Yeah, damn, I can't remember his name, but basically talks down t- on the whole, the, you know, meme of Ultramanes being the best of them all because they read the Codex of Stories a lot. It's like, it's almost talking down on that. Um, huh. So because of something like that, or and because of things Leandros has done, and it's like, well, for one, Leandros, you're stupid for doing that because, like, <laughs> if you suspect someone within a chapter is a little sus, you tell the chapter master or you tell the chaplaincy, you do not call the Inquisition. Yeah, big oof. Yeah, because you're lucky that this was the most rational Inquisitor out there, because if this is one of those radical kinds, they would make war on the Ultramarines. Gosh. And you think they wouldn't? They, look what they did with Space Wolves. <laughs> right. Yes, and it's like, do you think anyone with that context would trust Leandros ever again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because like you tattletailed on a fucking captain like that. Oh, buddy. But the whole point of this is, is that in the second game, because Titus looks like he has returned back to the chapter as lieutenant, um, what I'm hoping to see in story-wise is that there has to be a scene between him and Leandros because of that. Yeah, got to do a follow up. It's like, I'm sorry, you just can't ignore a bit of story like that. Right. But th- then again, that's what fan fiction is for. <laughs> exactly. And, and you would hope they would cover it again, or at least just touch on it just from a narrative perspective, because it's it's just good writing to not leave that hanging. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you just can't ignore something like that. Mm hmm. And, uh, it would encourage people to, uh, you know, like myself who hadn't played the first one, uh, to maybe go check out the first one and see, like, oh, what is this, uh, this beef between them? I-, I better go and check out the first one, even if I'm just watching videos. Oh, I hope in that context that I didn't spoil everything for you. I'm sorry. Oh no, you're fine. Like it, it it's been out long enough. Yeah, um, it has. It's kind of hard to avoid spoilers on stuff that's been out for a long time. Like, you know, how many decades has Star Wars been out? And oh, yeah. It is the, yeah, the, the you know what is the, the worst kept secret. <laughs> it's like, it's almost amateur. It's, it's like you can honestly expect people not to know that Darth Vader is Luke's father without even watching the movies. It's like, that's sort of a passing comment. <laughs> right. It's yep. like that that's something you just can't um ignore or miss. Right. And it's similar with um with a lot of Warhammer books and games and such. Uh I, I'm not too I'm not too fussed about spoilers. Um because <laughs> some of this stuff has been out for so long that it's a miracle if I can avoid it. Mm-hmm. Or it's like um there's some books that I'm just never going to get to because I just don't have time. Oh, there's so much out there. Mm-hmm. This is something I want to talk about because I think this would be pretty cool to do for the game, right? You know the Leviathan box, yeah? Yeah. Right, so imagine some of the models from there being used as like boss fights for the second game because that's something I hope to Ooh. see more 
Yeah, that's something I hope to see more in something like Space Marine 2 is that more bosses because in the first game, there was only like one real boss or technically right. technically two. So what I'm hoping to see in the second game, and because it f- it's going with the theme of Tyranids, is that imagine Titus fighting the Nero Tyrants. Oh. Yeah, the uh, Tyranid oh, yeah. Metroid thing. That'd be pretty cool to see. That would be badass. Yeah, and because it's a psychic, you know, focus type enemy, imagine someone like a psychic blank like Titus fighting it. I, w- I would like to see that. That would be quite the matchup. Mm-hmm. And on the They'd whole, probably be very confused too. Like, what's wrong with this one space marine? <laughs> yeah, because that's such a um, rare thing to ever happen ever in something like 40k. If that is true, if he is a psychic blank. Yeah. But then again, it might just be headcanon all these years all along. You never know. Yeah. But uh, just one last tangent about Space Marine 2, right? Because this is something also pretty cool. And going along with the theme of like psychic psychers and stuff, um, Thousand Suns are in this game. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that's just something you don't... Interesting combo. Yeah, you just never see something like that in a 4AK game, don't you? Yeah, not that I've seen. Yeah, because usually it's like um, something related to Black Legion or something related to World Eaters or Corn. So seeing Thousand Suns, it's like, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, like, it's nice to have a bit of a change. Mm-hmm. I would like to see what they could do with something like Titus, as a psychic blank, again, fighting something like Thousand Suns, because that's such an interesting idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then again, there's just not much on the story that we can actually really discuss about. It's more like what we've seen in gameplay. But even right. then, yeah. But even then, what we've seen gameplay, it looks really cool. Like fighting just a sw- an ocean of Tyranids, and that's pretty awesome to see. It's kind of like Doom Slayer stuff. Oh my gosh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like bo- boy, are we uh, getting spoiled on that front? Because we've we've got two upcoming games where you get to just mow through either demons or Tyranids. Hmm. Yeah, with the new Doom game coming out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, this is going to be a a fun half year into next year for just going ham with uh, any sort of like, you know, gun or chain weapon on aliens and demons. Yeah, especially on that subject, because one of the weapons in the new Doom game is like him shooting bits of skull. That's so 40k. Oh, it's so fun. It's like people say, oh, that's it. silly, but it's like, it's 40k silly and metal. It's cool. That's the point. What do you it's mean metal. silly? That's badass. <laughs> yeah, it's it's heavy metal, and especially with him having a Captain America change shield. Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And I hope they have that sort of thing in Space Marine 2 as well. <laughs> or it's like this this sort of thing builds a lot of character, right? It's when a character wears like a pelt coat um cloak or pelt cape Mm -hmm. yeah where it's like less like animal fur as a cape it's like that makes character exactly in this world it's drip or drown and you got to (laughs) drip or drown (laughs) yeah that's why i wear a hat because i'm floating badass (laughs) however i'm probably never gonna play this game because i just don't have a ps5 oh i forgot about that yeah, I just bought a Switch recently from a coworker, so I'll probably end up playing the new Metroid Prime, and you know I'm looking forward to that. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Switch is fun. It is fun. It's like people gave Nintendo so much shit in the early 2010s because, like, oh, this is not Call of Duty. But it's like, here's the thing: Nintendo makes games. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's like I don't see interactive movies when it comes to something like um, Mario. It's like it's a video game. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, every everything has its place. Yeah, it's like then then again, I enjoy God of War. It's just at the same time, if you're ta- wanting to have like simple video game fun, it's almost always Nintendo, isn't it? Exactly. 
But um, with that, actually, I think we've reached a good point where I can ask you some questions that people have left for us, if you're interested. Sure. Alrighty, alrighty. Um, here's ooh, here's a good question. What's your favorite Black Library book? Oh, damn. Oh, yeah, that's a tricky one, isn't it? And we were just talking about how there's so many books. Um, hmm. Gosh, and I've I've only read a drop in the bucket. I don't uh, know. Uh, lately, I've been reading short stories. Mm. Um. Oh, I did just read one. Like, I wouldn't say that this is like my favorite book because I, I feel like I'm not far enough into the books to really have a favorite yet. Being a Necron enjoyer might be a bit of a cop out to. To say, uh, infinite oh no, it, it's not a cop <laughs> out. It is just a good book. It's so fun. Um, it's like I was reading it uh, reading before I had to stop, but it's like uh, that book is amazing. Um, Trazen and Orican need a podcast. They do, and boy, uh, I have to reread it at some point because, like, you know, you read a book, and everyone, uh, unless you're doing like an audio book, everyone has, uh a voice uh in your head that you sort of automatically assign to a character um and it doesn't always happen with me um so i didn't really have a voice uh for any particular character in this but boy after that um hammer and bolter episode um with uh with trazen oh uh, yeah I, that's right i love whoever they got to voice him and I need to reread the book with that guy's voice in my head now. Yeah, that's right. That's something that works very well with something like Trazen. And that's just something that happens when Rain turn books. You have a certain voice, don't you? Yeah. But um, then again, at the same time, when I read like the Twice Dead King, I can't, you know, read something that features Necrons without them having like, you know, Spanish accents. <laughs> For Funny, some... I've never thought of that. For some reason, it works. Huh. Yeah, doesn't it? I, I don't know why, but it works well for something like Necrons for some reason. Maybe they're Mexicans. <laughs> because they of the theme. Mexicans. Yes, because of the whole theme of skulls. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like 40k art portrays them as like these lumbering zombies from an ancient time. But in lore, it's like bickering old Spanish people. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he he breaks a Necron this whole time. That's why he goes on these um tent um these uh, like long speeches a lot of times because he's just an old Necron. <laughs> that stop that happens in the book and twice that King a, a Necron's character presentation, but he's like um rambling on, and one of the characters goes, "Get to the point." Oh my gosh! Oh, <laughs> headcanon accepted. But um, for my favorite book. People might say this is a cop out, but it's not a cop out, right? And it's the um, Farsight um, Lies of the Empire. That was a good book for me. Ooh, what's that one about? So it's a second book in the uh, Farsight Quadrilogy, because there's no trilogy yet. Um, but that's the second Farsight book, and it's about Farsight during the Democles exhibition for the Tao Empire. Oh. Yeah, it's when the Tao Empire is taking back the Democles system that they initially took from the Imperium of Man. And it sort of like starts off, starts with, you know, Farsight, um, Farsight's enclave becoming independent from the Empire. So it's kind of like an origin story. Oh, okay. Yeah, we really get to explore like Tao culture and like how Farsight is as a character. And it's really cool. That is neat. It's like that. It, that's why it's not so inappropriate that you think of Farsight as like this um, sam samurai Ronin because it works so well for a character like him, right? Because look at his model; he's standing on top of a rock with cherry blossoms. <laughs> that is such a cool model. It is, and that's not a cliche. That's just his character. Awesome. But um, here's another interesting one. Um. What book would you produce if you had the authority? Ooh. Huh. That's a toughie. If I could I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. So sorry. <clears throat> oh yeah, no problem, no problem. But um I think I have one if you're interested in hearing. 
Sure. Right. Um, do you know the character of Felix Jaeger from God Trek and Felix? Yep. Right. So I want to, if they, if it's true that he's a Stormcast Eternal in AOS, I want to have there be some kind of book where it's like him as a Stormcast Eternal. I think that'd be too perfect mm. not to do. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe there's this one scene where it's like he meets, he sees God Trek, but he just doesn't recognize him. That could be cool. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I'd write. Um, maybe, I don't know, there's so many things to cover, but I feel like I'd probably help the poor Iron Hands. Oh, yeah. Th- they are guys that need some books, don't they? Yeah. I- if I had the authority, I think I'd uh, either write myself or have someone write something more for them. Those poor guys. Oh, yeah, because... From the bits you get about them, it seems interesting, but they just don't get anything, don't they? Why scars have more no. coverage than them? Or, or, or um, even just poor uh, uh, Manus. Um, he, mm. Like, I love the idea of him, but there's so little to go on. Mm, yeah. I think this is something best described about them. They're almost like the Germans of Space Marines. <laughs> No, it's because of their theme of Iron Hands, because if you look into it, there was this German knight who, who had the nickname of Iron Hand. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what his name was? What? Guts. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, G-U-T-Z. <laughs> Isn't that insane? That's funny. Yeah, and when someone asks the writer of Berserk, hey, were you inspired by this German knight named Guts? Because, you know, the names are so similar, right? And he goes, I've never heard this person in my entire life. Oh, and, and it's funny because um, I can't remember the term now, but there there's a term for, like, two people or peoples um, creating the same thing completely independent of each other. Yes, that Feels happens. Like that. It's like that yeah. happens more often than you think. Mm-hmm. It's like um, this. I can't believe I'm using this example, but Hunger Games. People say it's Battle Royale, but here's the thing: the right, the writer, she never heard or read Battle Royale in her entire life. <laughs> so it's like you can't say it's a ripoff, and she never knew it existed. Right. Yeah, it's not just because of some like um you know, theft or anything like that. It's just these, it's just coincidence. That's just something that exists. Yep. Or it's like, it's not that deep, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the curtains aren't blue because it's a metaphor for the character. No, the writer chose the color blue. Oh gosh, I hate death of the author. Oh, especially worse when it's Shakespeare, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, oh, what does... Oh, Romeo, my heart, Romeo, what? Make a 50-page essay on what this means. And it's like, I don't know, miss. Maybe she really wants to see Romeo. (laughs) (laughs) It's not that complex. It ain't that deep. It ain't that deep. It's a kiddie's pool. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, no, we got to make this hole bigger. We got to dig deeper. We got to find it. What does this mean? What does the author mean? Oh, my gosh. Sorry, uh, I just triggered something in my brain. I'm sorry because of all those <laughs> essays that you had to write in high school. But hey, your 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 teacher knows a lot more than the author. Wink, wink. Oh yeah, they definitely know more, don't they? <laughs> but um, here's an interesting one. Um, what is your favorite Warhammer? St- oh, sorry, what is your favorite Warhammer story arc? Oh, story arc. Um, huh. I don't I know. Th- like, w- would an arc be like multiple books or something? Maybe not. Um, it's more like um, something that has like a clear beginning, middle, end in terms of like character development or something like that. Or like huh. um, a bit of story almost. It doesn't have I to be. I guess in this case, I would probably say. Commissar Yerick's entire storyline. Okay. Okay. I can get like that. Like, if his, if his life counts as an arc, that's probably my favorite. 
yeah, I say so. Like, yeah, it doesn't need to be like um, a clear, oh, this is the beginning of my certain story from this time, from this little era. But no, an arc can be from how they were when they were young to their middle age to them eventually dying. It's like that that is an you can't call that an arc, I say. Yeah, because it's tough. There, there's, there's so many stories. Um, there's so much I haven't even gotten to yet. Um, so if I had to pick something that had like a clear beginning and end, <clears throat> it would probably be his life. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna pretend that he's not dead. Um, <laughs> it's okay if he's and, dead. <laughs> and yeah. Um, yeah, it'd probably probably be his life. It that it's just a really good perspective to show the Warhammer world from. Because um, mm-hmm. you've got everything from when he was orphaned uh, through all of the wars that he participated in, all the way up through um, the mystery around his demise. And because I I love Space Marine stories, everyone loves them. Uh, and even Xenos stories. But there's just something really cool um, and, I guess, realistic about just the regular human characters like him. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's such a good intro, I think, to this this setting, because you get sort of the ground-level perspective of what's going on in 40K. That's a perfect way of saying it, I think. Um, if I were to give a story arc, I think this is a good one to pick, and that's with Fryonor. Oh, nice. Yeah, going full circle on the topic earlier, right? So um, I like the idea that he's like one of those very um, most veteran space brains, space brains within his chapter, and he's one of those um, high-regarded um, cap, um, you know, space brains to Dreadnought that could ever exist within... Uh, that could ever exist, yeah. And so someone like him being betrayed by Fulgrim, then wasting all these years for him to come back to his planet and blowing and blowing him up. Um, even though it didn't work, um, it technically took away Fulgrim's ego. And that's something that Fulgrim just can't cope with when when you read his books, right? He has a very sensitive ego and he's boasting about how he's going to, you know, take Ryan or he's going to build him back up and be his like personal slave and stuff. But when the Thousand Suns decided to reactivate that bomb and both of them went out together, um, and Ful- even though Fulgrim survived, there's that bit of ego and pride that he will just never heal again. And that's something I really yeah. liked. Yeah, because that's something people don't understand when it comes to like egomaniacs is that um, once their pride has been poked at or there's something about that that has been taken away, they can't move on. They're always obsessed with that. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's something he's going to think about forever. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because he is a very vain prim- Primarch, isn't he? Very. <laughs> es- especially with him. And as for the last question, and this is something I might have to give context later, but um, gummy worms on carrot cake, yay or nay? Hmm. Uh, YOLO. You you can you, you can have the on. yeah oh. you can <laughs> why not have the, the gummy worms? I'm not sure if you know if the audience knows this, but for my birthday that on the week we were recording this episode, um, I decided to put gummy worms on top of my carrot cake. Oh right, <laughs> yeah, homemade carrot cake, and you know what? It was delicious. Oh good. Yeah, it's like I'm almost reaching thirty. I don't give a fuck anymore. I want gummy worms on my carrot cake. And it was delicious. Why not? You're you're only twenty seven once. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And but my dad was like, "That boy ain't right." <laughs> but hey, the cake was delicious, wasn't it? And like I said, YOLO. You uh, and it's your birthday. Treat yourself. Yeah, if I want to put um, strawberry milk in my Fruit Loops, I will. <laughs> I didn't do that. I didn't do that because that's too much even for me. That is tempting, though. Ah, uh, maybe one day. Maybe one day I'll do that. <laughs> because hey, w- once you reach a certain age, you can't eat that much sugar anymore. 
Yeah. Enjoy it while you can. But, uh, ooh, here's a good one. Who is the cutest character in Warhammer? Cutest? Huh. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't say that there's anyone who's like puppy dog or kitten type cute. Um, maybe this is not so much. Oh, sorry. Oh, if it's like attractive, cute, I don't know. Maybe Commissar Kane. I, I would, th- I would think he's more handsome than cute, but. <laughs> And my dad's well, cute with, cute with my dad's asterisk. listening to this. And it's like that boy definitely ate right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he could be cute with an asterisk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, maybe this is not so much of a character, but um, you know the the Watchers for Dark Angels, right? Yeah, you can call them cute. That's fair. <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely getting that plushie when it comes out. I'm playing him on my office. It's too perfect. Yeah. But with that, I think we've reached the end of the show. Is there anything you'd like to say before we call an end? Uh, just thank you for listening and thank you, Jarvis, for having me on. <laughs> anytime, anytime. And with that, thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time with a brand new episode. Have a good day, guys. Thank <laughs> you.